Hello, this is Mark from My Keys to Music. Thanks for joining me on this video. This video is all about those people who have a Nord Stage 3 and who really finally want to learn how the synth engine works and really eventually master it. And uh, although you can't really master the synth in one particular video like this, this video is quite lengthy and you will get the basics really under your belt. By the end of this video, you'll understand how to set the mechanism down to a default setting where you have a fighting chance of really understanding it. Get those sounds and those parameters down to a baseline level where you can hear a basic sine wave and or play a basic sample and then you'll move on from there. This will be the first in a series of videos that talk around the synth in the Nord Stage 3. So that's exciting. Now, if you're brand new to synthesis, let me warn you, um, I will go over terms a little bit, but I won't spend a lot of time talking about the envelope and how attack, decay, sustain, and release works, or really go dive deep into frequencies and harmonics and all the other things that are necessary, really, to understand the world of synthesis. If you're that person and brand new to synthesis, then take my Synthesizer Fundamentals course at My Keys to Music. There's absolutely no charge. The course takes less than an hour, but let me tell you, it is a prerequisite before you dig into this series, because uh, if you don't take that as a prerequisite, you really have no basic understanding of what this is all about. You could think of this as trying to teach someone to play the piano without them understanding what a C key is. So that's what this course is all about. So I encourage you to jump over there, mykeystomusic.com. All right, so what are you going to learn in this, this video? And I apologize, it's a little long, but the synth engine is very robust and it's going to take time to go through it all. So this is one of those, this is a journey for you. This is not about learning it in 10 minutes, but you will, after this video, you will be able to master the idea of turning on the synth engine, resetting things to, to ground zero, and playing a sample without the hindrance or all the other things that the synth engine can do. You'll really have a really firm understanding of those basics. And I'm excited to teach this. So if you are interested in this and you want more, feel free to subscribe. And then you can even click on that little notification bell. That's a more aggressive notification for, uh, it'll text you and or email you when a new video arrives. So I'm excited because this is the number one requested thing on this channel is that, Mark, please let's talk about the synth engine in the Nord Stage 3. Why? Because it's pretty darn complex. It's actually very robust. Uh, and there's a lot you can do with it. At the end of this series, and again, this is just video one of a series, at the end of this series, you will feel like you've graduated. That's what this series will get you through. Now, I don't know exactly how many videos this will be or how long it'll take to get through all this. And then even though we learn all this, there's so much to explore, like how do you create a sound from scratch and imitate XYZ. So very exciting times uh, here uh, in Nord Stage 3 land. And if you don't own a Nord Stage 3, just enjoy the videos and maybe you're looking forward to one or maybe you just want to learn more about the capabilities of the Nord Stage 3, especially in the area of the synth. This series is for you. Okay, with that said, let's fire up the Nord Stage 3 and begin. In order for you to have a fighting chance of understanding the Nord Stage 3 synth, I think the important thing to do is to know exactly how to set things back to an even playing field or a default setting that doesn't have a lot of settings already invoked. And the reason for that is if you are in a situation where you're playing an existing program that has a synth that's already well built out, you're going to have so many things to learn and understand that, oh, that's already on, and this one's already on, and this one's already adjusted. You won't have a fighting chance of understanding the synth if you're brand new to this. So the key here that you're going to learn here in the next 30 seconds or so is how to get your synthesizer um, set down to like zero settings across the board. And it's actually quite easy to do. Uh, and I recommend uh, first starting by changing your program setting on your Nord Stage 3. Go all the way to the left, the very first setting, A11 Royal Grand 3D. I think that's by far um, a great way to start because then we're all starting on the same page. Now, of course, the Royal Grand 3D has a piano invoked, the piano engine, so we'll want to turn off the piano engine, so make sure you do that first. That should leave you with no sound engines happening, and the only thing selected here is panel A. And that's a good thing. So now you want to turn on your synth engine. Okay, now you'll notice, now wait, this has already got a bunch of settings here. It's set to program synth uh, setting 5 detune. Well, that's no problem. We're going to pretend that that doesn't exist because we're going to select a special thing on the Nord here, which allows us to bring the sound initialization down to 
square one. And to do that, you simply hold the shift button and push this little button here that you may have no noticed as unison, but right below that, you'll see a label called sound int, which stands for sound initialization. So if you hold this shift key button or the button and push sound int, you'll get a whole new option here that says synth sound init or initialization, reset synth parameters to defaults. Aha, finally, a way to bring me back to square one so I can start and have a fighting chance of understanding this. So you can cancel that or push OK. Now, OK, you don't actually push on the OLED display here because uh, it's not touch sensitive. You actually have to push your four button here because that correlates with the OK button. You probably know that already if you've been playing with your stage for a while. OK, now look what we've got. Our synth has changed to the word basic, one basic. And in my case, it's on the saw wave. And all my parameters, you really can't see all of them because they're not illuminated by lights, but all of the parameters have been set to a default situation. Now, even though your knobs may show one thing or another, you can ignore the knobs because under the knobs, those settings are set to their default settings. While I'm on that subject, another important thing to know, besides resetting your synth uh, the way that I just showed you, is to know what's under the knob before you touch the knob. Because what happens notoriously when you're working with the synth or any other part of the, the Nord for that matter, uh, you'll move a knob and you won't realize, well, what was it? Because I've moved it now, so I don't know what the default setting was. I don't know what the setting was before I played with the knob. There's a button for that too. The button is called monitor. It's the official button name is monitor slash copy panel. But in this case, it's we just think of it as monitor. And if you hold the monitor button right here, while uh, fiddling with any of these knobs, you'll see the setting on your OLED display as to what that knob is set to prior to you touching it. And so I'm going to hold this now and let me just take my frequency knob, for example, because that's a really important one in the synth. And I'll jiggle the frequency knob here and you'll see it says filter frequency. I can, okay, 21 kilohertz. Okay. So now you know that the filter frequency default setting while holding your button is 21 uh, kilohertz. So if I let go of the monitor and fool with the knob, you can see I have adjustments all the way from 14 hertz all the way up to 21 kilohertz. Aha! So the default setting for the frequency knob, when I just reset it just a moment ago, is actually all the way to the right, or 10, or also known as... Uh, to be more specific and more scientific, 21 kilohertz. Okay, so now you've learned how to set the synth to square one, and you've learned how to monitor each of those settings, um, what their default level is before you touch the knob. Let me give you another example. Let's take this LFO amount, which indicates how much LFO you want happening, how much effect you want the LFO to have on the keyboard. So I'll hold the monitor button again, and then toggle the LFO amount. Aha, the LFO amount default setting is zero. And that's probably obvious for you if you've ever played with the synth, because the moment you start playing with the LFO knob, you start getting an oscillation effect where the LFO is now having uh, an effect um, on your Nord keyboard. And if you've ever wondered why it keeps going blah, 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 and there's nothing you can do, it's most likely because your LFO knob is beyond zero. So th I'm glad to know that they put the default setting of the LFO to zero because that, again, is another area of complexity where you can spend a good 10 minutes just trying to figure out why this thing is oscillating and going whoa, 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 when you didn't want it to. Okay, all right, so there's a long drawn out thing. So now you've learned how to set it to stage zero, uh, how you've, what's under the, what's lurking under each of these knobs as a default setting. Use that monitor, I use that monitor all the time to know what was it, what should it be. The other thing that you'll need to know is that now, even though I set this back to zero, watch what happens. If I put my uh, wave, the, my first oscillation knob here, and I put it to, let's say, ESAW, which is another sine wave you can pick here in my classic settings, um, you'll note very quickly that when I reset this, let me go reset it again, I will hold the shift button and click the sound initialization, and then I'll push OK. Watch what happens. My waveform does not change. So even though everything goes back to uh, square one, it will take whatever sound generation mechanism you had here and leave it that way, but it still will change all of these settings. So that's one thing to note, that your Nord isn't broken if you didn't see it go to the sine wave or the saw wave like you saw in my situation. Now let me take this another step further. 
if I had my sound source as wave, just straight wave, that's the second selection here up on the, um, on the sound generation area for your oscillators. Let's say I had it on wave 16. Let me set it again, reset it again. I'll click the shift button and I'll hold the sound initialization button and push OK. And here again, my oscillator selection, or in this case wave and then wave 16 to be more specific, has not changed. So th be aware of that when you set your sound initialization settings, it won't actually uh, override your oscillator in terms of that. Now, what if you invoked a second oscillator? What would happen then? So here I have a second oscillator having an effect here. So I've got both oscillators turned on and it's now on patch seven, mixed triangle. What happens then? If I hold the shift key and go to the sound initialization and push OK, aha! It removes the effect of the second oscillator, it kills the second oscillator, just leaves the first oscillator here, but leaves me on whatever sound generation mechanism I had, in this case, wave, or more specifically, wave 16, tenor sax. Okay, so that's a very important tip, and I'm sorry to take so much time to talk about that, but if you don't understand these basics, it gets very confusing very quickly, and the reason why I'm doing these videos is to demystify the whole synth on your Nord Stage 3. And this is, um, these are the fundamentals. Now, we haven't even played a sound yet. We're probably four or five minutes into the video. But that's the way it goes. This is what's called paying your dues. You know what that's like uh, as a musician, paying your dues. Okay, so now, with the sound, speaking of sound generation, the synth is a really interesting and important and powerful sound generation mechanism. And where it can get confusing for a lot of people, and I think it was even confusing for me um, when I first started looking at this, is that the synth options, uh, there's five sound generation mechanisms in the synth alone. Uh, the, the, and four of them are oscillator based. And one of them is sample based sound generation. And you'll see that there are actually five, one, two, three, four, five. And on the left side here, you'll like, if you take a close look, you can see classic, that's classic waveform, and then you get your second one, which is called wave, and that's uh, short for wave tables, and th those are still oscillators, but it's a different type of oscillator, the way it's configured. And then the third one here is your F wave, and your fourth one is your super wave, which was new and introduced into the Nord Stage 3 line. And then the fifth one, which is the one that most new people, and I say new to Nord people, uh, gravitate towards because that's where you get more of your authentic sampling, your more um, your emulation of instruments, flutes, clarinets, mellotrons, all of that stuff. All that emulation happens happens in the sample area of your synth. So this this is why things are so confusing because you have the oscillator choice, you have the sample choice, and uh, you know, sometimes you just want a violin, or sometimes you just want a clarinet, and you, you get frustrated because, oh, you're over here hanging out with the oscillators, and you're not necessarily going to get a clarinet if you're hanging out with the oscillators. Although you can eventually imitate a clarinet when you get good enough on this to understand what the fundamentals of a clarinet are, build your square wave, for example, and then build out from there, and before you know it, you have a clarinet-like sound uh, without actually using the clarinet sample. But that's, again, for a future video. That Now we're getting really deep. So I think that for, for understanding these basics, you've learned how to reset the synth, you've learned how some of the mechanics work, you've learned how to look at your default settings. And what I'd like to close this particular video, and it won't close right now, but what I'd like to end with is the ability to get you to a point where you can at least play your basic sample in your Nord Stage 3 without the hindrance or impedance or effect of all the other things that the synth can do. Now with that said, that's not necessarily a bad thing that the synth can do that. It's actually awesome. And I'll show you just a sneak peek of what's to come in some of these videos that I'm planning on releasing. If I hold the shift key and invoke oscillator two. Now I have a sample here called orchestra strings legato. That's sample one. Okay, and if you play that, ah, beautiful strings. Now that's what I was looking for. I was looking for a simple orchestra string out of my synth and not all the mumbo jumbo. Okay, beautiful, but Watch the power of the synth. You can actually hold the shift key and turn on a second oscillator, which will have influence and effect on those original samples, in this case, orchestra strings. And I can introduce 
something like um, a square wave in conjunction with my strings. Wow. And then I mix the two using this knob here. In other words, all the way to the left means I'll hear strings without any influence of that second oscillator. None whatsoever. It's as if I didn't even turn it on. But if I put it in the middle, that means my mix is going to be split between the original sample orchestra strings and this new thing that I've introduced, which looks to me like a square wave. Hear the square wave? This is the pure square wave if I move the knob all the way to the right. And now I'm back in video game land. And that's having influence over my strings. So now, this is a perfect mix between the two. So maybe you'd want to go loud like a two. Okay, so that's that. So I'm just showing you that. That's the power. That's the, the things to come. That's where it gets really crazy, really deep. And not only that, we're only on panel A. We haven't even invoked panel B. Wait till we get to panel B and mix panel A and B together and we have a saw wave and a square wave and a string sample along with a flute sample and we are creating sounds that have never been heard before by human ears because that's how deep you can go and that's how crazy it can get in this synth area. And again, that's why we're working together so we can learn this together. And believe me, I'm still learning. Uh, and I've been playing with this for a long time and I'm still learning it and really exploring. There's never a day you come here and you hear the same thing twice. Okay, so let's get back to square one and we'll finish this out with some other basics to get you going here on your synth that you absolutely need to know before you can even survive in this land. Okay, so I'm going to, sh I'm going to put the mechanism back to square one and for those of you, you already know what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit the shift key, I'm going to click the sound initialization and push OK. That brings my waveform back to square one. It removes uh, and sets all my parameters back to default and if that's true, I should hear my beautiful strings again. Now the other thing I need to tell you about is the envelope and not the modulation envelope over here. That's really advanced. We're going to talk about that in future lessons. I'm talking about the amplitude envelope or just known as amp end envelope. So that's the effect that the amplitude or volume has on your sound. And if you are really wanting to know all of this, again, I'm going to tell you to please take a look at that synthesizer fundamentals course. It's one hour. It's free and it's necessary if you don't know what I'm talking if you don't know what an envelope is or an LFO or frequencies and frequency cutoff and samples and sound waves and all of that go take that course first that's your prerequisite to be before you can really dive deep with me on these sessions and lessons but the final thing I'll leave you with here is the envelope this is another important part of your synth and it's important for those strings now you might have noticed the default setting for this is is uh, very on off meaning I push the key I hear the sound I let go of the key and it's very abrupt so you just heard a glimpse of it here I'm going to actually increase my release to about a three or four that will allow the sound to linger after I let go of the key and create a much more flowing uh, approach to this now the same is true on the beginning as I push the key I might want my attack to be a three or four that way it comes in a little bit smoother. If you want it to be even smoother, you can go to a five. And that's the envelope having influence over your sample. So it's not good enough just to set things down to zero and throw a sample together. You actually need to pay attention to the envelope over here as well. Okay. So that's a lot. There's a heck of a lot more to cover. We've only just scratched the surface on how to understand your synth. I'll give you a couple more tips here and then we'll close this uh, session. This frequency knob is another big thing, another big deal uh, situation. If you don't have this on 10, you won't really hear much of anything. If I have this on zero, the sound is gone. And you might be saying, I know the synth engine is on. I can see it's on. I've got my envelope correctly. What is going on? Why don't I hear a sound? And it's most likely because you filtered your sound out without even knowing you filtered your sound out. And that's over here on this frequency cutoff knob. And that this is a really, really important aspect of the entire synth. And that's maybe why they labeled it in red, because, hey, pay attention to this. This is important. So frequency, for generally speaking, if you're playing a straight sample like I'm doing here, I'm on my sample engine, um, my sample sound generator. Generally speaking, you want your frequency all the way to 10 so that you can hear the full glory of that sample as it was originally recorded. Like that. 
So, you've learned how to reset to zero. You've learned how to set your keyboard to a sample. Again, you just click this button till you get to this fifth area here, sample the two lights at the bottom, that's your sample. You adjust your envelope very quickly, so you can put a little attack if you want. Generally, I put the sustain all the way up. I don't generally have a decay, but if you had a short decay, you'd hear a quick uh, coming and going of that sound. There it is. That's what happens when you have a short delay. When you hold those keys, the sound gets swallowed back up because you've told the decay to have a big influence. Now, the more decay you add, the longer it takes for it to go back to zero. Eventually, it'll get there. And because this is a three-pole envelope compared to a four-pole envelope, like in other synths, um, you don't get the option to have your decay go down to your sustain level. You're either in decay land or you're fully sustained. Fully sustained means as long as I hold the key, you'll hear a sound. Okay, so I gave you some basics over sound envelope um, or amp envelope options. I told you all of these basics, so I think that'll get you started. So what's nice about this is, once you set your mechanism to zero, you can start playing with these samples, get your release and your attack. I'd go full sustain, maybe three attack, maybe zero attack, full sustain, and release maybe a three or four. And then I would start uh, moving through my samples, right here, using this oscillation selector knob. And you'll go, and this is where you can exper experiment with all the samples. And if you're really, uh, you want a pro tip here, you hold the shift button, and toggle this and you'll get a list of samples which is a lot easier to flip through and now you can say okay there's my saxophone and there's my steel guitar just the volume up. and now you're having fun playing with your samples and uh, enjoying those and really getting the most out of your Nord Stage 3 uh, in the area of samples and this is a great beginner's guide to do that. In other words, you want to hang out in sample land. Uh, you won't get burnt on that. Uh, you won't get a lot of space sounds, but you'll, you'll get some really authentic uh, emulations and samples and some great stuff. I use the sample area a lot. I play most of my gigs with a key bass. Um, here's a fretless bass. It's just kind of nice. So that's kind of cool. And so once you get into this, now how do you get out of this list mode? You simply click on the same button, the shift button, also known as the exit button, uh, to do that. So in and out of these list modes like that. So that'll get you started on the synth. Join me in future videos when we take this a whole lot further. We're going to learn the filtering aspects of the Nord Stage 3 synth, the understanding of keyboard tracking, drive. We will play with the arpeggiator. We'll play with um, mono and legato voicings here, the glide, the unison option. We will learn the mechanics of what it means to have a synth preset, which is up here. That's a whole other world of understanding and how that works. Then, probably the most confusing and perhaps the most advanced is how do I get influence over this modulation envelope? No matter what I do here, it seems like nothing works. Why is that? We'll learn that. And then, of course, the almighty LFO, which is a huge part of the Nord Stage 3 and a huge influencer over making sounds awesome and really robust. Then we'll talk a little bit about the arpeggiator as well. I might have already mentioned that. And then, once we learn the synth, we can learn how to bring all this together. How do we incorporate the synth with the piano or the synth with the organ? And how do we bring those two together to make yet a whole other set of unique sounds? So a lot of power under the hood, but it's going to seem easy after you take some of my sessions here and we learn together. It's going to seem like child's play compared to what it is now if you're brand new to synthesis or brand new to synthesis here on the Nord Stage 3. Thanks for joining me. Do subscribe if you like this content and want more. If you click that little bell, you will get a better and more aggressive notification by form of either a text or an email directly to you. Uh, so you'll know every minute uh, what's going on here the moment I release a video. The Stage 3 is a powerful and exciting keyboard, and I'm happy to be bringing the synth area to you. I've been working on this for a long time. I took courses on Udemy to bone up on my synthesis, and I've read the manual. I've got the manual right here, you can see. Uh, and I've, we're going to go through this each one, one at a time. But this is your overview to get started, and then we're going to get more detailed and really take this down into a granular level so that your understanding of it will be uh, scientific. Uh, you'll feel like you have a mini engineering degree by the time you're done with this series. And I don't know how many videos this is going to end up being. It could be 
it could be up to 10 for all I know, but, and uh, some of them might get long, like this one is getting long here as I pontificate and talk about the future, but um, join me on this. We're going to have fun together learning this. And then when you do learn it, you'll have the appreciation and satisfaction of really knowing your stage three and knowing the synth engine on a stage three. And I can tell you, working with as many people as I do, that this is the one area that people shy away from and just say, I'm not touching it. I, I just don't even get it. But I'll play my piano and I have my organ and yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll use the synth presets and kind of uh, ham and egg it right through. But once you learn the synth engine, uh, it, it opens up a whole world of creativity, imagination, and um, really just takes life as a musician to a whole nother level. Even if you don't use some of these spacey sounds you might create or the UFO sounds we're going to do or helicopters through white noise or any of that stuff, you may not uh, use it on a gig, but you'll have fun playing with it in the studio or at home. And, and that's really what life is all about. Remember, as a kid, for me at least, my first introduction was in the sixth grade. It was the Nord Poly 6. That was not a Nord Poly 6, but rather a Korg Poly 6. I've got Nord on the brain, forgive me. It was a synthesizer, and it could imitate the sounds from Styx and other rock bands of that era. Uh, and there's, it seemed like there was no shortage of things you could do with it. It was just like every button had a mystery or a, uh, a surprise behind it. That's what this is. This brings you back to being a kid again and sound creation and creativity and that's the very essence of being a musician and um and a sound designer and um, it's great to be living in this world where we have the option to do that especially on a great keyboard like this uh, and it's so much more than a synth you've got all the other things that nord brings to, to the table and finally i'll remind you that i am not uh, working for nord in any way i i'm not endorsed by them or have any affiliation really i'm just a guy who owns a stage three and thought hey why don't we uh show the world what's going on here. So that's what we're doing. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.